Our next artist is actually one of the founders of Sulu DC, Brian Wang. Give it up for Brian Wang. He is an activist, um, attorney, educator, and entrepreneur. And he hails from California, but he's currently here. Um, and uh, you can watch his pieces on youtube.com slash bwangsta. <laughs> Or blank stuff. <laughs> I don't really know how you wanted us to say that, Brian. But, Brian Wang, please give it up for Brian. What's up, Zulu DC? How are you all doing? Yay! <laughs> I am very honored to be performing for y'all on this February show, as it is uh, the week of Valentine's Day, and certain themes are on the mind, I am grateful <laughs> to perform for you and share with you my first and possibly last story on love. On February 13th, 1988, I wrote Happy Valentine's Day on 30 different cards for all of my classmates. Aww. But I saved an extra large card just for you. Instead of putting a couple of chalky candy hearts inside like I did for all the rest, I had a heart-shaped lollipop that I taped on the card. And I wrote, Dear Yale, you are the most beautiful girl in the world. I love you. Love, Evan Fitzsimon. He was the most popular kid in our fourth grade class. I was too shy and scared to, to tell you that I was your true secret admirer. I even wrote the entire card with my left hand to disguise my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, I went around, dropping off little cards in everyone's pouches on their desks, and I waited until you got to the other side of the classroom to drop the card in you. <laughs> I went back to my desk, pulled open my pouch, and looked through my meager stack of cards. And then I noticed, out of the corner of my eye, you were going around the classroom stopping by every boy's desk and asking them something. My heart started thumping. The sweat gathered on my brow. And when he finally approached my desk, he asked me in the cutest voice ever if I was the one who wrote the card for you. Oh no, I said. That's impossible. Uh, see? And I proceeded to write the entire same message with my right hand so you could actually analyze and check. <laughs> he gave me kind of a weird look. <laughs> Moved on to the next kid. Whew. For the next eight years until high school graduation, we never shared another word. Oh. In our high school algebra class, I spent every class looking back at you and admiring you from afar. You were a popular, gorgeous, graduating senior on the varsity soccer and volleyball team. I was but a lowly sophomore. Fat, short, dorky, <laughs> faithful as this, no friends and no car. <laughs> but every night I wrote down in my journal, I said, I must ask her out tomorrow. <laughs> and I always check it out the next day. Until finally, two weeks before graduation, I mustered the courage and I got up in the middle of class. While everyone was sitting down doing their assignments, I walked back to the very far end of the class where you sat. I knelt down beside you. I said, hi, Jackie. Uh, I, I don't think you know me, but uh, I just want to let you know that I find you really attractive. And I would really like to get to know you better. I was wondering if you might want to um, hang out sometime. You blushed. You, you, you st flashed that the, the dazzling smile, and you seemed genuinely flattered. You scribbled your phone number down on a small piece of paper and gave it to me and told me I could call you sometime. All right, yeah, cool, I will, thanks. I walked back slowly and calmly to my seat, hoping no one had overheard our brief little exchange. 
I sat down and I pretended to do work. But inside my head, I was like, Oh, I must have stared at this little piece of paper for weeks. It took me a month to call you after writing a whole script of possible conversation possibilities. Resemble to choose your own adventure. That summer, I finally dialed all seven digits and made it to the last one. My heart began racing while I waited for someone to pick up. Oh, it sounded like there was a party on the other line. And you chatted me with me for just a little bit. You said the World Cup was going on, and being that your family was Mexican, it was like a really like huge time for you. So you just kind of talk right now, and um, I could call you back later, I guess. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll call you back later. <sighs> I never called back. But every time the World Cup comes around every four years, I think about you. In college, me and my friends threw some of the best house parties. In the three-bedroom apartment, we packed it full with 200 people. And one night, I invited you to come. I spent the whole time in the kitchen making drinks blending them and serving them to all of our guests. My friends and roommates came by and said, Brian, what are you doing? Come on, let them, they'll take care of themselves. Come join us on the dance floor. I said, no worries. I want to be a good host. But really, I was just keeping my eye out through the window waiting to see you come in. When you finally arrived near the end of the night, I put everything aside and I followed. Made my way through the dance floor amongst the, the sweaty bodies and I got to you. Hey, we started dancing. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I was actually dancing with you. This is great. And then for some inexplicable reason, I did something so juvenile and disrespectful that I dare not repeat it right now. <laughs> you, you slapped me in the face. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, really, I didn't mean that. Uh, and at the exact moment, some friends came inside and said, the cops are here. They're breaking up the party. Everyone's got to leave. I, I tried to apologize. Oh, I didn't mean I didn't. But you said, whatever's and you left. I spent the rest of the night sitting on my ice chest, drowning in my sorrows, wishing I could turn back time. You actually forgave me, and we remained, we resumed our friendship for years. Um, the summer, just before our senior year, we were speaking on the phone, and he said, oh, it would be so great if you came over, I'm so bored and I'm lonely. And I said, okay, I'm coming. You thought I was joking, but the second we hung up, I drove four hours in the middle of the night. Arrived at your place at midnight, knocked on your door. You open it up in your pajamas, surprise! <laughs> you went and got changed, we went out clubbing. We ate late night afterwards. The next day we prepared a little picnic and went hiking up in the mountains. We had deep conversations. <laughs> By the end of that weekend, I was more in love with you than ever before. But I also realized that you would always see me as a friend. Oh. On the drive back home, I was disappointed, but not quite heartbroken. In fact, I was invigorated by the fact that I could finally move on. A week after I left, you got back with your ex-boyfriend, who you eventually married and now have a, be a beautiful child with. I'm really glad we reconnected after all these years. I'm sure you know that I still love you. We met on a tour in Beijing, China. Even though we attended and graduated from the same school, we uh, talked about our passion. In the palace. We flirted with each other from afar on the Great Wall of China. And we spent all night talking on a red bridge in a majestic garden beneath the stars. 
I know last night in China, we went out to the club, the only club in Beijing that played American hip-hop music. When our bodies finally came together, we were inseparable. Whoa. <laughs> we danced for hours, staring at each other, completely oblivious to the fact that everyone in the club was staring at us and watching us grind. We stayed up all night until we had to leave in the morning. And I continued on my backpacking through China for the next month. We emailed each other back and forth, each email getting progressively longer, more detailed, and more open with our emotions. When I finally arrived home, I dropped my bags, hugged my parents, then drove off to see you. That night, we walked along the Santa Monica Pier, sat on a bench overlooking the ocean, and we decided to make it official. You were my first girlfriend. And because of that, I took you for granted. I had no point of comparison. I, how would I know how much you were spoiling me in so many ways? <coughs> I'm sorry I couldn't love you as much as you love me. And to this day, you are the only person who has unconditionally given me your love, just as I had unconditionally given mine to so many others. In law school, I picked you up after class on my motorcycle. <laughs> and we rolled up and down the hills of San Francisco, your arms clenched around my waist and laughing in my ear. When I think of true happiness, this is the mental snapshot that I have in my mind. I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> we took photos together. We chortled. We danced in the bedroom to music no one else could hear. We would gaze into each other's eyes for hours. The sex was phenomenal. I never knew I could come so hard. <laughs> that when the mental and emotional were combined, the physical sensations are that much more powerful. You taught me to be fierce, to be strong, to have integrity to defend the woman I love. I wanted to be the perfect man for you. But I never could. I cried more over you than anyone else when I first thought I lost you. When I begged and pleaded for you to not give up on me, to not give up on us. When I ultimately realized that I loved you more. It was karma. What goes around comes around. And now I finally understood what I had put others through. So when it was time for us to break up, I accepted it. Calmly. Rationally. We parted ways. Three months later, in a moment of weakness, I laid in my bed and looked through photos of us. <laughs> and I sobbed all night, wondering if I, if I would ever feel so happy again. I knew I would fall in love with you the moment our eyes met. When you approached me at the bar, I downed my drink right away. I said, bartender, give me another one. Make it a double. I needed as much liquid courage as possible to take on my greatest challenge yet. We laughed, and we never fought. I didn't know that it was possible to not fight in a relationship. We traveled the world. We won trivia tournaments. We volunteered our friends' political campaigns and celebrated at multiple victory parties. We killed it at the crafts table that one time. You redesigned and redecorated my apartment as a gift? Hell, you redesigned and redecorated me. And on my 30th birthday party, you planned a surprise party with all my friends. 
they, they all asked me, Brian, you are really lucky. And I said, I know. And other friends asked me, Brian, how did you get her? And I said, I, I don't know. I can't go backwards. And I often wonder if I'll ever find someone who can surpass or even compare to you. You will always be my ball bay. And finally, you. We met, I don't know, 10 minutes before the show. I wanted to interview you about love for my performance tonight. And you said that you definitely believe in love. It's something that everyone needs to enjoy, but also be open to. And that struck a chord in me because it reminded me of how I used to be. I was so generous early on. I gave my heart to anyone who would give it a time of day. But over the years, I started to protect myself, to not let myself be so vulnerable. I erected walls around my heart. so that nobody could hurt me. <laughs> but, you said, to really enjoy love, you have to be open to it. And I feel like I cannot let my fear prevent me from enjoying and experiences, from achieving what I really want. So, fuck it. Yeah, what? Um, hi, uh, I just want to let you know I find you really attractive and <laughs> enjoyed the conversation we had earlier today. I was wondering if you might like to hang out sometime, you know, like after the show or intermission, like just right after my performance. Let's take this. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious, yes. So would you like to you know, hang out sometime? I'm serious, everyone's listening right now. It's kind of awkward, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I want to hang out with him. Yeah, all right. Cool. Um, well then, uh, you know, I'll see you. I'll, I'll be. I'm almost done. Let me just clean uh, out my stuff. And uh, yeah, let me just finish up my performance. Wrap it all up. And, uh, cool.